Okay, this is now the Tarot Lesson number 38, and I changed the title from Tarot Lesson to The Tarot for Self-Education. Not for self-development, um, but there's a certain amount of self-development takes place when you study the Tarot, but I'm focusing on self-education. So there's a Latin verb, ducere, which means to lead, right? And e at the beginning of a word can mean out of or from. So educate means you're leading somebody from one place to another, um, ideally from darkness into light or from not knowing into knowing. And I'm thinking we really ought to educate, we have to educate ourselves because no matter where you go or who teaches you, in the end it's about you doing more with what you're given or following, taking the next step and learning from what goes on or what happened or what didn't happen or what should have happened and, and fixing it or I adjusting your behavior so that you're leading yourself out from difficulty let's say into ease that kind of idea i think is what's involved with the tarot for self-education so um today this this video might be a little bit disjointed but um um, I, it's a follow-up to Linda's question because Linda had a, has a friend called Chris, right? So Chris and David are friends. Chris wants romance with David. And so Chris wanted to know what's, what's the possibility, what's going to happen between me and David romantically, basically. So Linda's question was, and I can't remember the exact wording, um, but it's like, what what are the thoughts, feelings, and actions um, for, for of David relating to Chris? And I don't know what the exact wording of the question, but um, I, I say the exact wording because it's important. Because if you say, okay, the, the three cards that we got were the Queen of Cups for thoughts, the Ten of Pentacles for feelings and the Page of Batons for actions. So it's really difficult spread, I think. And I think it's partly because the, of the, I, partly I don't know the question, but also I don't know if, there, if anybody really knows the question. Because I think um, I, if, if I were doing this and somebody wanted to know how does somebody else feel, I would pick three cards and and in the light of the cards that come up, I would talk about what I thought the odds were that there's going to be a romantic connection between the people. So if I pick these cards, if we get the Three of Swords, the Eight of Swords and the World Reversed, it's not going to happen. You know, you just look at the pictures, you look at the cards and you know that there isn't much hope for a romantic relationship between the two people. So you can then say, well, how does he, how does he or she feel about me? And you can think, well, he thinks you would keep, you would trap him or you would trap her and you would promise a lot but not deliver the world reverse and you would have baggage from past relationships that you would bring into this current one. So you, you're, you're asking a general kind of question like what are the odds of, of a good relationship or a romantic relationship and you're answering the question, um, in in the light of the three of the the cards that you chose, whereas by contrast, um, if is there going to be a relationship between us? And you get the six of cups, the four of buttons, and the judgment card. Here you've got a couple, and it's upright, and it's cups for love and romance. We've got the four of buttons, which can represent a wedding because this can be a wedding canopy where people go through and there's celebration about to happen and judgment is an angel blowing a trumpet and people are released from prison or confinement and so on so yes it's going to work there will be a good relationship between you 
you might even get married and everything will be hunky dory or coming up roses or whatever you want to say because the judgment is here so if we were to look at these three cards in that same kind of a way is there a chance of a relationship between them <sighs> no doesn't look right because one of Linda's questions had to do with she she told Chris what she thought this all meant but Chris took away from it yes there's going to be a relationship between them and that's not what she said but so she wanted to know does the tarot always tell you the truth or is it up to the reader and one thing we have to consider is people hear what they want to hear you know there's an awful lot of that goes on with people um, so what do you do as a reader maybe you educate yourself and you have an experience of a particular kind of reading and in the light of what happens you revisit your technique or your method or your procedure or your process and make some adjustments there so that may, maybe what you do is um, before a reading about how does somebody feel about me you say People have asked this before and they always take it the wrong way. They only see what they want to see. So I hope that's not going to happen with you. So you, you set the tone in the beginning that you may get you, 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 you may hear what you want to hear, but you may not. So you have to be paying attention. But it's better if you pay attention to and, and listen to what is said rather than just block out anything you don't want to hear. So maybe that, that's what you would do for questions like this. But when, when you're a specific, because with a couple of email, or comments back and forth with Linda, um, she, the, the question had to do with the thoughts, feelings and actions of David relating to Chris. And the thing is, it's really important to write down your question because I think one of the things is the tarot answers the question that you asked, not the question that you later asked because you forgot what you asked in the first place. And I say that because let's say question the the, the first card is going to be about th thoughts of David relative to Chris. If the question is how does um, or what what does David think about Chris? That's telling us about Chris. Whereas how does David think about Chris is telling us about David and what's going on inside his head. Whereas what does he think is more about about Chris. So what is what is David think about Chris and again all three cards were upright and I don't know whether Linda uses upright or reversed but I'm assuming that she uses reversed so all these are upright so um, how does or what does David think about Chris um, he looks at Chris and he sees somebody manipulative maybe or intense and deliberate and slow because that's the Queen of Pent, or the Queen of Cups, and the other thing is, because it's a Queen and not a King, maybe if you think of the King goes out and makes things happen, the Queen responds to circumstances. So David looks at Chris and thinks, Chris is not a self-starter. He's he's, um, or she is, um, receptive and needs information. Then she'll take action rather than somebody represented by a king who just goes and does stuff. Whereas, um, how does David think about Chris? Then this is describing David. So David thinks about Chris um, in a Queen of Cups way that he maybe suspects that Chris has ulterior motives and is a bit suspicious because it's the Queen of Cups who can be suspicious. Again, if the Queen of Cups had been upside down, it would be more obvious that it's you're looking at the, the dark side of, of the Queen of Cups. But here, um, uh, 
David, how does David think? It's hard to keep track of the questions here. How does David think about Chris? Um, that Chris is maybe not to be trusted, even though they're friends. Um, ca can he imagine a romantic relationship between them? Maybe because maybe there's a physical attraction because it's a Queen of Cups, but also. Do you want to get involved with romantically with somebody who is so intense and maybe demanding and maybe hard to please? How does the, the second part, this is the thoughts, this is the feelings. So how does David feel about Chris? So we've got here, we've got the old man and we've got the guard and we've got the girl and the dog and the child. This looks like traditional, conventional, old fashioned. So how does David f feel about Chris? Traditionally, he's, it's a traditional kind of of feeling and it's old fashioned and whatever that might mean. But because Linda mentioned in her email that um, David is in a relationship, it's an open relationship, which I think means they can have affairs with anybody else they want and the other person doesn't mind or isn't supposed to mind. But I think with, with so David, David may be in a, an open relationship, but you have to wonder how conventional he is. With the Ten of Pentacles upright, um, I would think that David's actually quite conventional and quite traditional and old-fashioned in his view about relationships. So if Chris is inviting something different, then I don't think David is going to be that amenable or cooperative when it comes to a non-traditional or an unconventional kind of relationship. And then how does, what sort of action, again, I'm not sure of the question, but what sort of action might David take and we've got the page of I I never do this but as I look at it now we've got the page looking this way and the queen looking this way and they're back and back and it's a bit like if this is David on the one hand he's looking in one direction but at the same time he's looking in the opposite direction so I don't know if David really would be that interested he might entertain the idea for a couple of minutes but then he would spend an equal amount of time or even more time in the opposite direction so I can't I can't see um, David having eyes for Chris so what sort of actions is going to take it's a page pages are young people and inexperienced so if there's going to be anything developed between them I can't see David, represented by a page, a young person, taking the initiative. Do you know what I mean? And also it's a barren landscape around him. So maybe David feels kind of on his own in a desert. And that may be how he feels. But this, the question had, isn't about David's open relationship, it's about David vis-a-vis -vis or in relationship with Chris so how does he feel or what action would he take you're in a desert I don't know if he's going to see the possibility of any kind of action or any kind of romantic involvement because he's in a desert maybe in a desert you want to get out but I think it's barren things don't grow in this particular desert here and I, I, was, I would think it would be along the lines of feelings for Chris are not going to grow and he's not going to take action to make things happen. Um, so in the first reply to Linda's question, I thought maybe before you begin a reading like that, you pick a card um to know something about the people. You could take a significator card for, um, so Chris is represented by that card and David's represented by that card. 
So, and the, the, going back to what I've been talking about with the three cards, and last week, or last lesson 37, having to do with seeds, if the reader talks about the cards this way, you're planting seeds in the mind of the questioner. And at that moment, they may just hear what they want to hear, but you're, you're looking at the picture and talking about what's contained in it. And the person can see the picture as well and can't help but be influenced by what you're saying and what they're seeing. So if this is Chris and we get... Chris is the Queen of Pentacles, whereas um, David is the Empress. So you look at the two together. Do they go together? What kind of people are they? The Empress is a major trump. And looking at the two together, the Empress seems to be, well, I would think the Empress is looking for a, an important relationship physical, mode, emotional, mental and spiritual connection between David and whoever the partner happens to be. Whereas Chris is represented by a queen, not a major trump. So Chris would be happy with a connection. David needs multiple levels of connection is one way of looking at those two cards. So that, that could give you a starting point for then picking, let's say, three cards. Okay, is there going to be a relationship between them? One, two, three. Um, the chariot reverse looks like no, because they're going in opposite directions or different directions. Um, the sun, then there's a maybe yes. And then the last card, temperance reverse so the answer is maybe right because the middle card counts for two two yeses no and no right so two yeses two no so the answer is maybe is there, there there is a possibility of a relationship between two people whoever they happen to be yes because the sun is there they're hopeful and optimistic and are looking for somebody a good partner they can spend a long time with and maybe have children with but they're going in opposite directions and they feel weak because temperance can lead to strength. Um, but they're, they sort of, you know that expression about oil and vinegar or oil and water don't mix? And it's a bit like they're going in opposite directions. They're too dissimilar. They don't mix. One is oil, one is water. And you can put them in the same glass and mix them, but they don't really combine they stay separate so if it, that that's kind of what's going on so the, the the one in the middle needs a connection and a joining of whatever energy whereas the two people are like oil and water they don't really mix so if they can overcome that lack of compatibility then they've got a chance but is it going to work? Maybe, but somehow I'd say no. I think the odds are in favour of the reversed cards rather than the one in the middle. But that's my opinion. But then um, you, I don't know, you, you talk like that and let the questioner agree or disagree or take it to heart or get annoyed with you. The other thing is, is the tarot always right? I think that we, we have to assume that the tarot is always right, but the reader isn't always right. Sometimes you get it wrong and it can be annoying, but at the same time, um, you don't want a reputation of always being right. You need to be wrong sometimes, partly because you're human, but also because um, if, if you're always right, then uh, bad things will happen. People will come to depend on you and it's not healthy. Okay, today is Monday, so Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'll see you on Thursday with 
The time for self-development lesson 39. Okay, thanks for watching. If you have comments or questions, let me know down below. And um, I'll see you again. Okay, bye-bye.